So as Joe Biden's cognitive functions and mental capacity continues to deteriorate very obviously before our very eyes, I hate to say it, but he is beginning to sound more and more like Donald Trump. You know, everything from his braggadocious nature to even his cadence, like everything he says seems very Trumpian. And the way that I kind of view him is as a Trumpified version of Hillary Clinton, because when it comes to policy, he's basically, you know, Hillary Clinton, maybe slightly to the left of Hillary Clinton, but he acts like Donald Trump. He has this pseudo tough guy persona and it's really off-putting. But I wanted to share a clip from Fox News and I usually don't like to talk about Fox News unless they're giving me, you know, an opportunity to make fun of them. But in this clip, a miniature version of Steve Ducey is going to ask him about his small crowds in comparison with his opponents. And the response that he is going to give here is going to be just so Trumpian that it's honestly embarrassing because he's not just going to deny, you know, that his crowds are small, but he's going to just flat out lie and uh, reject reality. Biden's first event of the afternoon was at a smaller venue, but there was still room in the back. So I had a chance to ask him what he thinks when he sees a more progressive primary candidate like Elizabeth Warren on TV with a crowd in the thousands. No, no. It depends on what the nature of the event is. What I'm trying to do is go around from town to town, and I'm drawing as bigger crowds or bigger than anybody. Have you seen anybody draw bigger crowds than me here in this state? Yes. Well, you have. Where? In Des Moines. In Des Moines? In Des Moines. And the former vice president didn't seem to like that because a few minutes later, he singled me out to say he thought I was going to be unfair to him no matter what, but that he can handle it because he's a big boy. So directly in the middle of that sentence, he stopped himself and incorrectly decided to say, no, my crowds are actually bigger than anybody. So rather than just saying, look, I'm drawing as big of crowds as them, which still would have been incorrect, he decided to take it a step further and be even more incorrect when we all can see the videos in the photographs. And um, believe it or not, after the cameras stopped rolling right there, he apparently went on to uh, talk about his poll numbers. That's according to Minnie Ducey. So, I mean, he's just morphing into the Democratic version of Donald Trump. And it's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. I mean, what do you say about this? Do you honestly believe that this narcissist is going to be the one who will motivate Democratic Party voters to get out and vote for him over Donald Trump? I mean, look, we're all on a gigantic ship right now that's the size of the Titanic called the Joe Biden, and we are sailing straight into an iceberg. It's 2016 all over again, because Hillary Clinton also, there was just no enthusiasm around her campaign, and I would argue that so far, based on what I've seen, there's even less enthusiasm, if you could imagine, around Joe Biden. But the way that Hillary Clinton kind of argued against that lack of enthusiasm in the small crowds was to say, look, I'm more electable, so um, it doesn't matter if there's no enthusiasm for me. If you want someone who's going to beat the Republican, you've got to vote for me. And, you know, that's no different. We're being beaten over the head with that same electability argument. Just the other day, Jill Biden, Joe's wife, was talking about how even if, you know, you don't necessarily like my husband and you think that there are other candidates with better health care proposals than his, <coughs> Bernie Sanders, <coughs> you know, you still should vote for him because we all can agree that the number one goal is to beat Donald Trump. So, you know, Joe Biden is now running television ads that reinforce that narrative. Uh, the mainstream media, MSNBC, is running countless segments reinforcing that narrative. So it's the same thing, and nobody's going to learn their lesson. There was no enthusiasm for Hillary Clinton, but everyone said, you know what, vote for her because she's more electable. She lost. And, you know, what's crazy is that in the event Joe Biden were the nominee, God forbid, and he ended up losing to Donald Trump, Democratic strategists, you know, television pundits, they still would not learn their lesson. In the event in 2024, there was another corporate centrist Democrat that, you know, was not very popular. There was no enthusiasm for him or her. They would still say that we should vote for that individual based on electability. And I truly believe they would be stupid enough to do that. Because, I mean, 2016 wasn't that long ago. You'd think that 
everyone would have learned their lesson. You'd think that they'd see the writing on the wall currently, but they don't. And look, this lack of enthusiasm, this isn't something that's new for Joe Biden. Since he announced his campaign, there has been a considerable lack of enthusiasm. And this article from Politico explained that even if he's polling high enough, you know, to be considered a front runner, well, despite his position in the polls, he does not have very large crowd sizes. Attendance at the former vice president's launch rally paled next to some of his rivals. In his first Iowa visit, he didn't match the crowds that greeted Elizabeth Warren or even the less well-known Pete Buttigieg in their initial visits. So far, he's kept his events to smaller venues where there's little danger of empty seats. In the eyes of Biden's progressive critics, as well as President Donald Trump, who has publicly mocked him for it, the seeming lack of excitement or teeming masses at his events is a leading indicator of a lack of passion for his candidacy. Quote, I started to think the polls were wrong about Biden because it's not what we're seeing on the ground, said Amy Allison, founder and president of She the People, a national network devoted to promoting women of color. And that hasn't changed. The electability argument hasn't resonated with more people. It's not drawing out more people. And in fact, you know, the power and level of persuasiveness of that electability argument is going down because people can see that this man is a buffoon and he is making, what, 10 gaffes a day? I mean, I'm being hyperbolic, but you get the point. This is not how you win an election if you truly are committed to defeating Donald Trump. And even Joe Biden's own supporters, if you talk to them, there's zero enthusiasm there among his own supporters. Now, this is anecdotal, but Jordan Sheridan attended the official Joe Biden campaign event during the second Democratic debate. Listen to how enthusiastic one of Joe Biden's supporters sounded when uh, he was talking about Joe Biden. What, what was your favorite line of Biden tonight? Uh, I'm very glad he said malarkey once again. That's oh, ma malarkey was a big one. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so anything on policy or substance or just malarkey? Oh, just malarkey. I mean, honestly, I haven't been, I haven't been that impressed. I'll be completely honest. I buy it. No, not really. Everyone, but you're wearing his shirt. It was free. I just wanted, I just want people to know, I did not put him up to say this. This is your honest answer. Yeah. I mean, I like Biden's policies, but his performance tonight has not been the best. And let me ask you, because what I find kind of troubling, just, this is the official watch party. What I find troubling is, you know, I covered the Bernie event last night and it was packed and nobody left. But here there's not a lot of energy and everybody's leaving before the party's over. I mean, as I said, I think it's kind of due to his lack of flair and performance that I was expecting tonight. I think a lot of people have similar opinions on that, and that's why everyone's kind of leaving as soon as they are. And what got you, uh, I know you're kind of not feeling it tonight, what have you liked as far as his policies before tonight? Well, I like his idea of health care specifically, like it, because he's really trying to keep it like Obamacare sort of centric, and I think that was like, I think that's a good idea. I like Harris's plan as well. I like the idea of like, you can choose to have like Medicare if you want it, but not forcing it on anyone like Sanders or Warren is proposing, that sort of thing. So I like. Yeah, but you do know most people uh, on Obamacare are having difficulty paying for it. Yeah. You've got me there. I'm <laughs> Biden 2020. Whoa. <laughs> Jordan's reaction right there had me just in tears. Um, because, I mean, like, what do you say? People are clearly not that enthusiastic. And he posted along, I think it was like 20 to 30 minute version of uh, that type of video where he's interviewing people at the event. And people just say, you know, I, there's a lot of issues with him, you know, the crime bill, but he seems more electable. And when you have MSNBC shoving that narrative down people's throats, of course, they're going to begin to believe, all right, maybe I should care about electability because this is what MSNBC tells me. And, you know, I'm just casually following politics. I don't know. So I guess I'll go with the person who I know uh, it, it has a good chance of beating Donald Trump based on what people are saying. And this is just, it's a recipe for disaster. Now, getting back to his comment about his crowds, I'm going to play that for you again. 
what he says, and then I'm going to juxtapose his comments with Donald Trump's comments and what Donald Trump said about his inauguration crowd size. And I'm drawing as bigger crowds or bigger than anybody. Have you seen anybody draw bigger crowds than me here in this state? We had a crowd. I looked over that sea of people, and I said to myself, wow. And I've seen crowds before, big, big crowds. That was some crowd. When I looked at the numbers that happened to come in from all of the various sources, we had the biggest audience in the history of inaugural speeches. Now, Donald Trump said this after we all were able to see photographic evidence that demonstrated that is a verifiably untrue statement. But he still made that claim. And the same is true for Joe Biden. He's still going to argue that his crowds are the largest. So he is like morphing into Donald Trump before our very eyes. And some strategists are going to say, you know, in response to my argument that he's becoming a Trumpified version of Hillary Clinton, they're going to say, well, sure, that's great, right? Because we need a left equivalent to beat Donald Trump. No, no, no. We don't need a left-wing version of Donald Trump. We need someone who is the antithesis of Donald Trump's far-right policies. You all know who that individual is. There's one candidate in this race who I think would have the best bet at beating Donald Trump. Nobody's a sure bet. Nobody's a guarantee. But the person who I have the most confidence in is Bernie Sanders, not Joe Biden. Because when you look at Bernie Sanders, there's actual enthusiasm there. People are motivated to get out and vote. You know, younger millennials who are burdened by student loan debt, they may come out and vote for the first time knowing that he wants to cancel their student loan debt. But with Joe Biden, he's basically saying, look, I'm, you know, I'm for the status quo. I'm not going to change very much. And the lives of elites who are taking advantage of the have-nots, you know, their lives aren't going to be fundamentally different if I'm president. I mean, who do you think is going to be the more electable person? The person who actually can excite the base, which is what you need to win when Donald Trump excites the Republican base, or someone who does not excite the base? I mean, I shouldn't even have to ask this question because we already tested that electability theory. If the writing is on the wall, if someone is incredibly unpopular, if they're not drawing very large crowd sizes... Don't make the electability argument just based on polls because Hillary Clinton was leading too and we all know how that turned out. So, I mean, let's not make that same mistake that we did in 2016, guys, please. You could support the Humanist Report at patreon.com slash humanist report. But trust me, I'd have way more supporters on Patreon if that was my podcast. Sad. <laughs>